Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature Event, checking in with 5327R, well, Gale Force Raw, I don't know how long it goes for, uh, uh, and we're going to check out their awesome robot that they bring here today. Uh, had a great season so far, uh, taking number one seat at both their events, winning one of them as well, too, so congratulations on that uh, as well. Uh, also got the Amaze Award, too, so congrats on that. Take a look at 5327R. They've added a great blocker in the robot. Uh, saw it on the field. Very effective what they've gone through on here. But we're going to cover a lot of different mechanisms, including uh, PID that they're doing uh, on their drivetrain and other cool stuff that goes into this team. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Shakti, we got to start out on this blocker we talked about here. You have a, uh, well, a blocker and an inside blocker. So talk to me about uh, what it's comprised of and uh, what made you want to add that blocker that you have. All right, so basically starting off, we have a two-stage blocker here. Let me turn it on. If you notice, it reaches a large distance because of our eight-wheel drive, and we're able to cover uh, um, a tall distance. And we have a second stage, which stops other teams from match loading as well, which allows us to get in and block from any angle possible. We can even block them from the side, because this isn't the main thing that's blocking like this vertical portion, but it's more this horizontal portion. And another key feature that is so useful when we're blocking other teams is that we have this um, over-centered lock that basically what happens is, is if there's any force it goes on to the main structure rather than just on the pistons itself so uh, we don't have to depend on uh, PSI to make sure our blockers like overbearing over the uh, opponent's team and it also ensures that whenever we're trying to match load uh, no other teams can stop us because it acts as an anti-blocker because we're able to show through and over and I think I'll hand it over to Kevin for this one. I think one of the things I love about your team is the versatility it brings, right? You have a great blocker, but you got some good offensive power too. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so the slapper is one way that we use to solve the issue of getting the tri ball over the uh, P black PVC bar. Uh, so one the, uh, thing that's unique about our slapper uh, is that the slips, instead of just shaving off the teeth, we, we can cut the entire thing off. That way, um, it not only looks better, it saves a bit of weight, and it also guarantees that, the, that nothing from the teeth can interfere. So that makes us run very smoothly. The other thing is for our uh, slapper, there's two arcs. One arc is when you place it here, uh, when, you, when you place it forward, then it shoots it through the blocker. Yep, like that. It goes over uh, through the barrier. Um, and another one is the second arc that uses the same point. There you go. It hits over. So even though um, it, it's in the air for a longer period of time, it, uh, the arc is higher than a lot of other blockers. So it can go over that and it's a guaranteed way to match load over. Uh, so another thing that we have is our intake. And what's unique about this is our intake is very low and it leans downwards. Uh, this is so, um, and, and it also uses a cross brace um, uh, or X bracing uh, with spacers. Uh, these spacers help allow it to shove itself, shove um, itself inside of the um, bar of the goal, which helps us uh, ram against it and out uh, and outtake and score, which is very good. Uh, another thing is for the back, we use mesh, uh, and the mesh just helps us get more contact and it reduces the strain of the um, rubber bands. I want to go back to your slapper for a second here. Um, I love the uh, versatility having both the, the low shot and the high shot for it. Was that something that got added like after the blocker, or was that something you always had in your bot? It's something that I always thought of. Since I saw that, uh, since we saw that a lot of uh, um, what slappers and catapults, they had only one arc. Uh, but so we want to have two arcs. Uh, so even though initially we planned on having another um, part in the back to also hit it, uh, we found out that after building this, hey, it can actually do two arcs on it by itself. So that's more convenient. That saves space and that saves weight. Yeah, love the strategy that goes into it. Uh, Nicole, let's talk about your flaps on your robot. Uh, what's been going on with that? Anything uh, unique that stands out with it too? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, 
on this team, we really love pneumatics. You can see our blocker uses pneumatics, and here we have our flappers. So these flappers are very special. We have three screw joints here, and it allows us, when the flappers are triggered, to lock. Look at this. If I take a tri ball, for example, let's just say that tri ball is like right in front of the goal here. Um, it's really, it takes a lot of force to push the tri ball to the goal. So if I hit it, they are locked, and um, it will not cause the flaps to bend back. Now, an example with the flaps back, if we can deactivate the flaps, if we didn't have this, um, if we didn't have this lock, it would, it would instead push the flaps back. It would instead like push the flaps back, which would obviously be ineffective at pushing the tri balls into the goal. Another special thing about our flappers is that we use this piece of polygarp here, and you can notice that's a bit um, bent over here. Um, this allows us to better uh, maneuver through the arena because it's bent, so it'll more easily bend back when we go through corners, and it'll honestly help us um, and not get stuck. Um, and obviously, as you can see from our locks, the, the the locks work because we are not pushing on this piece of metal. This is the piece of metal that takes the largest amount of force. Our, it is instead powered by. Um, it is instead. Um, in, it, it is instead pushed by this standoff, which means that obviously that they will lock. So we started to wrap up this robot, Dishik. Talk to me about uh, some of the programming side of things. I'd love to hear about the feedback you're getting on your drivetrain uh, and anything from the motor config as well, too, you want to mention. Yep. Okay, so first I'm just going to talk about our basic drivetrain and um, what it's composed of. Um, so first, um, our overall drivetrain is a 360 RPM drivetrain, and that's through using 600 RPM cartridges and gearing that through a 36 to a 60 gear ratio. And this means that our final um, drivetrain is 360 RPM, which is a good balance of both torque and speed. So because we're using six motors, we have a lot of pushing force and we can kind of fight to match load or fight other people and block them from match loading. And so this means that we kind of have an advantage on the field in the fact that we can push around other bots and we can kind of go where we want to go and stop them from going where they're going to go. And another advantage of this drivetrain is these two traction wheels right here. Now we put these traction wheels in the center so that the center, the turning center of the bot is right directly in the center. This helps with programming and driving control as it makes sure that it's kind of intuitive with how a human would naturally think about turning and the fact that the bot would turn from the center. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about our PIDs. So the, a PID is basically a mathematical equation that lets robots account for different errors that happen during their driving. So this means that if your battery is at 50%, you know, someone bumps your bot, it'll make sure to account and actually go the exact amount of distance every time. And so we use PIDs to make sure that our autonomous routines are really consistent and this also helps a lot with their skills routine. Because this means that let's say there's one, like a bunch of tri balls rolled here for the goal, and it takes a lot of force just to push those tri balls in. If I tell the robot to go at a very low speed, it'll make sure to put in more voltage into the motors to keep it at that speed and push all those tri balls in. And this greatly helps with our skills and our autonomous, as I mentioned before. Is there anything from a teleop you might be looking at implementing in regards to getting feedback as well too at some point? Um, I guess one piece of feedback that we actually wanted to add but we didn't get to add for this competition is actually printing something out on the controller sure. that can kind of debug and give uh, feedback back to our driver Shakti. And so one thing I want to think about is kind of getting the motor temperature of these motors and printing it onto the actual controller. Because that means that he can kind of gauge when his motors are overheating. So let's say I could kind of give a little message that like intake is overheating, drivetrain is overheating, or something like that. And so that basically just gives feedback to drivers about what components of the robot are kind of not usable in that state. Let's say maybe we had a bunch of call matches right next to each other and a drive stream is overheating, then you might try to more focus on scoring or match loading that don't take up drive streams use that much. Well, 5327R, thank you for an awesome overview of your robot. Love the iterations you've been doing. I watched your blocker earlier, it's phenomenal, so congratulations on the great design. And of course, we can't wait to see how you do here at Speedway, so good luck yep. the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.